NWA said fuck the police, but you guys said fuck the FBI. Ladies and gentlemen, Shoestring from the Dayton family. What's up, man? Um, talk to me about what it was like growing up in the 80s in Flint. Crime is like that all time rate too. Erica, they try to say we in the top three, mm. top three of folk, like one of the four cities in America. Yeah, this was Snoop and Dre and all them came from with the chronic. But in Michigan, we was out selling them and everywhere. So she wanted to know who the fuck is this Dayton family selling all these damn tapes. What was it like touring, traveling, performing with the insane clown posse? Did you guys ever have any issues performing, you know, in, in out of town and in, in hoods where gangs were? When we was in Chicago, we had a couple shows that we did where the gangsters and disciples just went crazy. Next thing you know, they say it's, it's about six vice lords in there. And they say it's like 20 vice lords in there. And they say it's like 50 vice lords in there. On the line, we have a Midwest hip hop legend, icon, somebody who was a pioneer of Midwest hip hop, underground hip hop, grimy hip hop, independent hip hop. Ladies and gentlemen, Shoestring from the Dayton family. What's up, man? What's going on with you? What's up, Playboy? What it do? What it do? Oh, man. Let's, uh, let's jump right into it, homeboy. I'm really excited about this interview. Um, first, uh, Dayton family is, is uh, based uh, because of a street in Flint, Michigan. Uh, Michigan, you know, 60s, 70s, and 80s, it was really popping. You know, I guess more like 60s and 70s, it was really popping with the auto manufacturing. And like 200,000 of the half of the 200,000 residents actually worked in General Motors. Um, they saw some hard times. Um, talk to me about what it was like growing up in the 80s in Flint, man. Oh, man, it was booming. It was booming in Flint, you know. It's it was booming in, uh, in Flint, Michigan, and Detroit. We was built on General Motors around here. You know what I'm saying? Everything. It was booming in Flint, Michigan, man. Just, uh, uh, just, uh, just so many people. And the GM left. When GM left uh, Michigan, man, they went overseas. And they took a lot of jobs overseas. And things are different now. But when we was growing up, man, stuff was so fun, man. The, the population of people was just it was a lot more people here man so much to do man neighborhood and neighborhoods was beautiful clubs and stuff was jumping mother working fathers working uh you you, you had all uh, a lot of kids had access to cars and stuff like that because their mother and father was working at general motors making money but man it's not it's not like that anymore general motors up and left man it's man so many abandoned houses and stuff like that but we still love our little town, man. It's still jumping, man. You know, this is where I'm from. You know, so I, I always loved it. Flint, Michigan, man. I always loved it, man. Yeah. Actually, actually, they actually they strike it right now. Right now, man, you got the UAW, work, UAW working, and they standing out with the signs and everything. I guess, I guess GM, uh, I guess they didn't come, you know, I guess they ain't come to, uh, together on a contract or something like that, man. So, so right now, you know, they striking all all across America. Doing they just flip this and all down to Texas and everywhere. I think they say like fifty thousand workers or something, man. So you know, right now we beefing with GM right now. Mm, damn, is uh, do you guys still dealing with that water crisis? Oh man, we still dealing with it, man. Wow. We still still can't drink no water. Matter of fact, it's funny you say that here. Hey, just a couple hours ago, man, I just got through. I just went and bought like five. A ten off, uh, chase was a lot. And, and the thing man, we got the highest water bills. We got the highest water bills in the country, and we can't even drink. <laughs> That's cold. That's dog. crazy, man. I'm talking. It's crazy, man. We got the highest water bills in the country. And we can't even drink the water. I can't even drink it, man. Wow. That's crazy. I know you're you're doing something to kind of help out in that area, aren't you? Yeah, man. You know, my. Definitely, man. I got uh, I had dropped the album called uh, Fix My City, man. You know, and uh, had a song on there called Fix My City, man. Just talking about the water crisis and you know trying to uplift my city, man, and just trying to help some of the young young folks, man. And my my boy Bootleg right now, he really uh he really uh doing a lot of work too, working with the mayor and uh you know just trying to you know uplift the people and just trying to you know take water out through the projects and take water to the elderly and 
you know, trying to, you know, talk to the young people about the crime. The crime is like, crime is like at all time rate too. When we was coming up, we were thinking it was, it was rough, man, shoot, it wasn't nothing like it is today because a lot of these young cats, man, they wasn't, you know, they weren't raised, they came off that, that crack era, man, they yeah. killers out there. You know, we, you know, we had handguns, but it was five, six shots, man. These guys, man, they, hey, man, they got AKs and everything. It ain't nothing. They shoot throughout the stuff. Yeah, and nobody's paying attention because we all put our focus on places like Chicago, which, yeah, it's, get, it's crazy in Chicago, but Chicago's so big, and so they're going to have a lot of murders. But when you're in a, a, a smaller town like Flint, Michigan, and you're having a high amount in, of, of murders, I mean, per capita, you're way above, the, you're probably in the top five, top ten of the whole country. Yeah, we is, man. And, they, you know, I, I hate to say something like this, man. It's crazy, but they trying to say we wanted to, they try to say in America, they try to say we in the top three, mm. top three of folk, like one of the four cities in America. That 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 hurt me when I heard that. I said, damn, they, hey, that hurt me when I heard that. They try to say that, you know, coming from Flip, man, you coming from Flip, man, you know, Flip always been that thing, man, you know, mm. coming from Flip. So just, to, just to hear that right there, man, that, that's crazy, man. But like I say, this is, you know, in my community, like, they've been breaking, they've been tearing a lot of houses down and stuff. It's a lot of my friends and stuff, you know, locked up, you know, a lot of, like, like I say, man, it ain't, it ain't a lot of jobs around here and stuff. So, you know, you put the drugs and stuff and the liquor and stuff in our neighborhoods and liquor uh, stores on the corners and all that, these kids and stuff, they ain't, hey, they ain't, hey, what you think they gonna do, man? They, yeah. they grew up in my neighborhood, you know, there's liquor stores on every corner, you know, they dropped the crack. That's over here and now, like I say, this generation now, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing a generation coming from the crack mothers that had kids and stuff that wasn't raised. So they killing now. You know, the streets raised them. They ain't got no love. They ain't got no grandmothers and grandfathers and uncles to talk to them and, you know, make them, show them how to work and do things. This generation is totally different. When you look at them now, man, it's just, I mean, even in the music game, it's totally different. They get they get tattoos on their face. All the videos, all the videos is in, 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 you know, they got pistols, guns, everything. You're a bunch of young cats with they with they pants down, but the jeans are tight as hell. How the <laughs> hell can you be sagging? Man, how the hell can you be sagging and the jeans are tight? They skinny jeans, so it's just, yeah. man, it's different, man. We're on a roll here. I like where this is going. Um, speaking of what you literally just talked about, what are your thoughts on Takashi Six Nine and this whole situation? Man, I can't even knock him because, uh, you know, I ain't tripping about him because everybody always, everybody always talking and everybody always saying what they do and this and that. But in my neighborhood, man, it's, it's a lot of guys that got caught up with drugs. They out here. So you don't really know who's snitching, who's talking to the police or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it, it's like that goes both ways, man. It's just like I don't know the cat. All I can say is, uh, you know, all I can say is, you know, Hey, man, you know, when you portray to be one thing and you're not that, all I can say is I hope the cat learn, man, and get somewhere and sit down somewhere because uh, they may try to kill him or something. But other than that, man, I ain't got nothing to say about him. I know he, some of these young cats are just foolish. And, and, you know, you know, I see everybody talk about him snitching and everything. But, man, I can't, I can't, I can't trip, I can't trip on the young man because it could, it could be your son. It could be my son. I know him as my son. You know, you know, my son, I'm gonna be ready to ride for him. So I can't, I can't even speak on a young cat like that. It definitely ain't real what he's doing. But then again, I don't know the cat, so I don't know what. You know, a lot of times people say they gay, they rap, but everything you think, you know, you I don't know if he really cut like that. Yeah. Evidently, he must not be. Evidently, he must not be. They say he talking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So what's your point on it? What, how you see? You know what? I'm. I'm. I feel like, yeah, it's the gang's fault for bringing them in. They should not have even let this guy get anywhere near to them. They got greedy. And the only people I can point at are the nine Trey Bloods. I, I, I can't point at this little, dumb, little uh, rainbow-haired kid. And, and, and once again, and I'm in my 40s, too. So I really, like like you, I'm, I'm kind of like, the whole situation is stupid. I just kind of, you know, it just sucks that, you know, uh, more, more of our people are getting locked up. And this guy's probably going to be free. And I see, and yeah, and I was gonna say, I see, um, I see that situation is growing up. I ain't really look too much into it, but everywhere you look, somewhere somebody talking about it. So mm -hmm. it, it got got the world's attention because, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't even really even know the cat. Then I seen one of his, 
videos. I, I think it was a video where he had the bloods in there with the bandanas. I don't know the name of the song, but I liked the song. Yeah. I thought the song was tight. Same here. Huh? I thought, yeah, but I thought the song was kind of tight. And then next thing you know, I hear my man, I, you know, I was watching that with the, you know, he with the bloods and everything. And I thought, I thought the video was tight. I had never heard of him. My mother said, damn, man, this video kind of tight. Next thing you know, I heard he was snitching within the next world. I heard him. Yep, you know? Yep, yep. I want to start at the beginning just a little bit before you, actually. Who are some of the the Michigan uh, hip-hop artists that were there, you know, just before you or right around the time that, you know, a lot of us out there probably wouldn't know their names? I would say MC Breed. Oh, yeah, we know them. I, yeah, but I would say MC Breed. I would say uh, this group called Chicken Bone. Uh, it was a cat named... Carlos that was, that was rapping back then, he was pretty tight. Uh, I would say my cousin, uh, Yuli Rock and uh, Gazno, and uh, there was a guy named Drake. I would say the Bode crew. It was a, it was a group of three brothers. Uh, it was two beatboxers and one rapper. His name was Bam, and they was real tight. They was kicking up sands, winning. They was winning a lot of talent shows around here. So them was, was some of the cats, man, that motivated me and uh. You know, some of the cats that motivated me and made me want to do it. You know what I'm saying? I grew up, I grew up, my favorite group, you know, my favorite, favorite group was Run DMC. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite group. And once I heard Run DMC, I knew what I wanted to do. Shit. I love the Run DMC, uh, L Cool J, Public Enemy, uh, Scarface. That's my favorite rapper. Oh, yeah. Scarface. I love Scarface. Uh, Tupac, uh, Biggie. You know, a lot of them cats, like I say, like Run DMC and all of them, you know, they, you know, they paved the way for me. So, you know, it wouldn't even be no me without them. So I, that's what made me want to do a Run DMC. Once I heard Run, I already knew what time it was. Hmm. Talk to me. <clears throat> talk to me about Backstabber and how he was Master P before Master P, how he was, you know, baby before baby, how he was top dog before top dog. Okay, well... Matt just was a guy. Matt was just a guy's name, Matt Hingle. They called him all backstabber. He just was a guy around here that was on the, the Dayton, Dayton Street. He was one of the top hustlers off the block Dayton Street, man. And he was, you know, he was getting it. He lost his mother at a young age. I think he was like 13 years old. His mother had got stabbed and And after that, man, he just, he just took to the street. So he was just a guy that was around here, you know, getting it. You know, uh, he was just getting that, getting that money, getting that bread, and going to school, driving El Dorado, was wearing Mark the Cannon, Nanny Goats, wearing you know the best Nikes, the best Adidas. You know, a young age. I'm talking about you know, you know, 14, 15, driving El Dorados and everything like that. And uh, and uh, my boy, I actually didn't know him at that time, but my boy who I rap with, Bootleg, introduced me, introduced me to him. Which uh we got together and done a song, uh, Dope Day Now and uh, you know, by Matt being one of the dope dealers that was on that street, he heard that song and we had his name. We had had all the top hustler names in the song Dope Day Now. Mm -hmm. Once he heard that song, he just he felt in love with it and uh shit, he started investing in it and uh it took off from there. You gotta realize when when crack first came, when crack first came the fiends had money. The fiends had money. They were shop workers. Mm. So, so when it, so that's the difference in now. That's the difference in the dope game now. And these these fiends now, they crackheads. They ain't got no money. They ain't working no General Motors. They ain't got cars. But back then, back then, you ain't had to sit up on the corner and just. You ain't had to sit up on the corner and just chase cars. You can sit back. All you needed was three or four. Shop workers and they, you know, they get Man. paid about two dollars a week. That's all it took. That's how the, that's how the dope game blew up. That's what it was when the crack rock hit. All the all the motherfuckers that worked in the shop, they was the motherfuckers that had the money to buy the dope. As soon as they get their check, all you had to do, as soon as they get their check, all you had to do was get a hotel room and have some dope, put them in there. They gonna rent their car. You drive and they new Cadillacs and everything. As long as you got them at the room with the dope. That's what they gonna be. They coming straight to you and send your check. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it was. So that's so that's why when we came, man, it was man, it was flint was booming then. It was just you had General Motors, man, and that was a lot of that 
that had a lot to do with General Motors leaving too, because it was a, it was a lot of stuff that was going uh, wrong with the cars. Because a lot of the people that was working for them, they were smoking dope. They were uh, if they were yeah, they were smoking dope, so they were fucking they were fucking cars uh, up by doing. It. Damn, forgot a seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, huh? I said, damn, forgot to, forgot to put a seatbelt in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So whenever a lot of cars were called back, a lot of them were fucked up. They wouldn't go to work. They go to their doctor's office. They get their feet cut on. Wow. All kinds of shit. That's that, that, that my GM. That was one reason why GM wanted to get away. But like I said, when we first started, man, the city was both. We came from when we say dope day now. We mean dope day now. We we had 15, 20 bird men on that click. That when when Matt wasn't around, me and my group when Matt wasn't around. It, it was fifteen other. It was fifteen other niggas that we go to. We had to do a show. We needed twenty five hundred, three thousand for clothes, whatever. We go to the next. My boy Joey, bam, he everybody started believing. It started with Matt. Mm. They thought Matt. They thought Backstabber was crazy. They thought he was crazy when he got ready to invest. Well, they like, man, what's <laughs> really But after they seen, after they seen how wrong we was, and after we started taking the clubs off. And every nigga just started jumping along with it. It didn't matter. It, it went from one nigga to 20 niggas all invested. So that's what I'm saying. Dope Day Now is a, a family. It was about 20 dope dealers. And it just, man, it was panic. I can't even, I can't even explain it. I'll explain it. We were stars. We were stars before we got any deals, man. Shit, I used to go to McDonald's. I'd go to McDonald's or Wendy's or any place like that in Michigan. But I didn't even have to pay for food. Damn. I didn't have to pay for nothing. And the, and the ship was taking, the ship was uh, blowing up so bad that Syria Rose, you ever heard of a lady named Syria Rose? No. Well, she was a, she was, she was a black lady, but she was one of the biggest CEOs in the music game. And she worked for Atlantic Records. Okay. She worked for Atlantic Records. She had uh, uh, Gerald Levert and Levert, and that was one of her groups. She had Yo-Yo. She had Invo. Well, anyway, she wanted to know, she wanted to know in Michigan. She wanted to know who the hell was this group dating family out selling. You had this was Snoop and Dre and all them came from with the chronic. But in Michigan, we was out selling them and everywhere. So she wanted to know who the fuck is this dating family selling all these damn tapes. So she called so she called down and she called down to run the record stores down here and wanted to know about the dating family. So we you know, we went up to the record store man and we uh she wanted to she wanted to fly us out and the rest was history. We got ready to do a big deal, and that's what my once the shit hit the newspaper. Once the shit hit the newspaper, they came back and indicted my man, backstabber Matt Hinkle, because he had got he had served he had sold a half of a bird to an undercover cop, but they had PFI'd it for like four years. But when he got with the Dayton family, and they that shit hit the newspaper, Dayton said we we all bought new cars, and we was getting ready to blow. And the police was like, "Oh hell no!" They brought that. They brought that old case back up on him and it died. Mm. We got ready to do a big deal, and that's what my once the shit hit the newspaper, once the shit hit the newspaper, they came back and indicted my man, backstabber Matt Hinkle, because he had got he had served he had sold a half of a bird to an undercover cop. But they had PFI'd it for like four years. But when he got with the Dayton family and they that shit hit the newspaper, Dayton said we we all bought new cars and we was getting ready to blow. And the police was like, "Oh hell no!" They brought that they brought that old case back up on him and it died. Mm. Damn, that's cold, man. Speaking of speaking of the law, uh, NWA said fuck the police, but you guys said fuck the FBI. Uh, is that well, we we said to fuck the FBI because our whole thing when they came and. When they came, when they when they came and and indicted Matt, they indicted the whole clique. They took they took well, all all the motherfuckers I'm telling you about. Mm -hmm. the, the, they indicted the whole clique, man. When they came, the, all them boys got like 27 years, all of them. So we was going through, man. When we was man, when we dropped LBI and all that shit, man, we was going through so many raids we couldn't even drive. We be driving, man, police man harassing the shit out of us, man. They pulling the trunk over, we jumping out. We was going through all that shit, man. All all that shit. They harass us. We be over our family house, man. They kick in dope houses and they tell they tell motherfucking dope dealers, yeah, y'all know them day motherfuckers, family motherfuckers tell them we gonna get them motherfuckers. Niggas are telling them the motherfuckers was Tom, but they gonna get us and everything, man. We yeah. we've been chasing boxes, man. We man, we went through so much drama. 
with the police. So a lot of shit that I was seeing Gucci and all the rappers going through shit, man, we went through that shit, man, 20 years ago, man. Damn. You know, being that that your lyrics, you know what I'm saying, were on the gangster side, did you guys ever have any issues performing, you know, in, in out of town and in, in hoods where gangs were? Uh, yeah, it was sometimes we, well, well, we, 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 it actually was, it was just more of when we was doing shows and we do the song like I'm a gangster, it was a lot of crips and shit, stuff and jumping on the stage, wanting you to communicate gang shit with them. So it's like shit like that. When you go to gang places, when you do a song like I'm a gangster, they want to, you know, they want to get up there with you and want to, they want to know you. They want to know you into that gang. They want you to get up there and throw gang signs. So when we was in Chicago, when we was in Chicago, we had a couple shows that we did where the gangsters disciples just went crazy. And then we had a show where I wasn't at a show. We had a show where my boy bootlegged them. Actually, it got set up at, uh, in Chicago. What? And I, was, I wasn't at that show. It was, it was a show, man. It was a show that um my boy... Bootleg and uh, his brother Ghetto Edom, they all went to the show with some of my people, but I didn't have a good vibe about it, so I didn't go. I was trying to tell them don't go, but they ended up going. And uh, after the show, actually, actually, it was some, it was some bloods, it was some bloods that had brought them to the show. So the whole show was basically a setup. So after they, after they did the show, they was, uh, my boy Bootleg don't want to go. To the liquor store and get some liquor. So the guys that brought them there, the guys that brought them to the show, was like, you know, okay, we we'll take you off to the liquor store. So as they go to the liquor store, they pass like they notice them. My, uh, my manager noticing like, damn, you know, they pass four or five liquor stores. So my manager, them like, man, what's up? What's, what's you know? They thinking to themselves, man, what's you know what's wrong with them? Ain't got a liquor store? So they you know, but they was thinking they like, bam. So anyway, man, they go to some liquor store or something, man, and they say they, you know, everything looking good. They say they uh, they say my manager, my manager, my manager tell once they get to the liquor store, my manager tell my boy Bootleg them don't get in the car, don't get out the car, let them get out the car and go get the liquor. But my boy Bootleg them didn't listen. By the time he said they, they like, man, fuck what you talking about, they didn't jump out the car and went in the stuff. So when they go in the store, ain't nobody in there. Next thing you they know, next thing you know, they say it's, it's about six vice lords in there. And they say it's like 20 vice lords in there. Then they say it's like 50 vice lords in there. So they surrounded by all the motherfucking vice lords. So they like, what the fuck going on? The store is small. They like, damn. So they like, uh, they like my, uh, my boy ID them. They got kind of cowboy. Uh, outfits on and they shit cocked to the right or whatever. So I guess one of the one of the vice lord dudes or something say, "Man, what's up, man? What's up with your boy, man? With all that blue on, with his shit cocked to the right like that?" Yeah, because so, if you're a vice lord, I guess it's to the left. If you're a disciple, it's yeah. to the right or something like that. Yeah, yeah, some shit like that. But anyway, they got on blue anyway, and that neighborhood is red. Mm. So man, what you doing with them? So the move, so whoever one of the vice lords come up, I guess uh, like man, what's up? Man, what y'all, y'all, y'all niggas come down here, man, with your shit cocked on to the right, rocking this down and cowboy shit, man. What y'all come down here, man, disrespecting us and Farrakhan like that. I guess Farrakhan building the summer somewhere, whatever they said, but, and then, you know, my boy, you know, my boy Bootleg, man, like, man, what you talking about, man, we ain't tripping. So he said, man, why don't you tell your boy to take his hat off? So at first, my nigga, he dirt, he ain't take his hat off. So he's like, man, so he's like, man, take the motherfucking hat off, So he's taking that off, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, man, the motherfucker say, man, it's all, say something like, man, it's all a dating family? Like, yeah, man, we the dating family. Like, man, I ain't even gonna lie, man. Man, y'all motherfuckers harder than the motherfucker, man. He said, man, but he said, I ain't gonna lie, y'all make some dope ass music. But man, why y'all had to make that song, I'm a gangster? And, uh... You know, because they had, because the gangster disciples, uh, they had been run That's an anthem. Uh, that's an anthem. That's an anthem to the blue. To the blue. Uh -huh. They like, man, motherfucker, why y'all have to make this? You know, they riding on that song. I'm a gangster. <laughs> so, so my boy Boothead, you know, he, he hugged one of the niggas. He tried to, you know, he tell him, he like, man, look. He said, man, well, we, we ain't even into that gang bang and shit. 
Man, when we we talk when we say gates, we just say we gates. We ain't into the, you know, we just gates. So we say my man like, look, man. He like, man, the only way I'm gonna he said the paddy wagon out there right now, man. And if you know, it's probably gonna be our only chance to get out the store. So then then they say the dude who owns the store know these dudes, so they must be from he trying to put he telling he telling the dude at the store telling them don't all telling them man telling them the vice lords man don't tell my store and then my boys tell me that uh they knew the dude's name like Ren we ain't gonna tear your shit up Ren we ain't gonna tear it up so he like look so he trying to put my nigga in the mouth so the dude who owns the store he trying to tell me y'all gotta leave my store so my nigga like man what the fuck going on so I, you know my nigga don't gotta get out the store. So they walking, but they walking right in between. It's a whole line of motherfuckers on the left, on a whole line of motherfuckers on the right. They in the middle of the line walking on. Some of them they go outside and uh try to get to the try to get to the motherfucking all uh, whether the bins or something, man. They try to get to the bins, and when they got outside, and as soon as they got ready to go, one, one motherfucker got hit with a bomb phone, and then they you know you think you know it's on, they just jump. They didn't, they didn't jump my nigga so my so my manager, this motherfucker this, this motherfucker that jumped this the motherfucker that jumped in the car and he done burnt out and left everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he get in the car, but he they, they were saying he they they were saying he had you know the motherfucker was dropping he dropped the keys like in the move. <laughs> he dropped he like this motherfucker dropped the keys like in the move. But anyway they he got to the car. And they was trying, you know, they, you know, they, they in the middle, they fighting, they, you know, these motherfuckers jump on my nigga, dude. you know what I'm saying, and all. Uh, so, you know, they trying to kill, you know, they, they hit motherfuckers with bomb focus, I mean, with, with the big wood thing. So, so, uh, my manager, when he get in the car, shit, he just, you know, he took, he got away and took off. So he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know, if, he didn't know if my boy bootlegged them was dead or whatever. He didn't know what happened. That's he just looked. So he ain't heard nothing. From the, he ain't heard nothing from them in like a couple hours. Next thing you know, next thing I, I get some holes. I get some holes come by. Well, then y'all dang family, whatever. Y'all dang family, whatever. So my nigga don't catch some, catch some, some holes. Arrive with the holes up to the hotel. My boy called. My boy called. You know, to the room. Boom, and then he tell you know just tell my for make sure ain't nobody at the room. Boom, boom, boom. They go to the room. They come home. When they get ready to come home, I'm at the crib. I'm I'm on a bike. I'm on one of them LA type bikes. I'm sitting I'm sitting at the crib when they pull up. When they pull up, these motherfuckers get out with a couple of lumps and bumps on their head. I'm laughing at them. I'm, I'm laughing at them. And these motherfuckers laughing too. But uh, but they was laughing. I say, man, I told y'all motherfuckers don't go down there. I had a funny feeling. But uh, when they went down there, though, when they went down there, the, the police said they was lucky because. I think they say something about seven seven disciples or something had been killed in that store that week. Damn. So it, it, it so it, they made the police every time the police seen somebody on the sidewalk, the police pulled over and searched them. So the police say they was lucky. Mm -hmm. that they was lucky. They probably had them guns somewhere, stand somewhere. That's why they wasn't shoot. The very next day, in case the disciple blew at, they heard about it. So all them motherfuckers started coming to the room. Boom, one motherfucker, let's go ride. What? Motherfucker, what they do today? So a lot of, a lot of shit has died and all that. Damn. The blue, the, the blue motherfucker, the blue side heard about it. And they was ready to ride. They was, you know, they came to the room. My boy was like, hell no, we ain't gonna fuck with none of that shit. So they was up out of there. But uh, you never know, man. You know, God, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You never know. I might have been that motherfucker that got killed that night. Yeah. So it might, it might have not been meant. For me to be with him, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, damn, that's crazy, man. You just never know, man. You just never know. Yeah. That's how I look. I looked at it like that. I said, you know, God was with me. You just never know. I might like, what? I mean, what's the what's the odds of me not being with my group? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So I just had a funny feeling. So you never know. I might have been that motherfucker that got killed. So that's yeah. the way I look. Yeah, man. Shit. One more question, then I want to give you a chance to promote everything you got coming up. What was it like touring, traveling, performing with the insane clown posse? Oh man, that was the funniest. That was the funniest shit in the world, man. And that's not something. Talk to me, dog. I have to know. Man, that was the funniest shit in the world, man. And we were so crazy about it. 
ICP, I, I definitely got to get him respect. And uh, I had nothing but fun, man. I got nothing but love for him. And uh, I would definitely say it was I had so much fun. And they were so connected. ICP was so connected because touring with them, every show was downtown. So when you went to all these, it was like 53 shows. And it, it was like, it was like, five shows every seven days and it was like mm. you know when you west coast they knocking out everything in the west coast when you're on the west coast they hitting all that shit then when they go to the south they working all the south shit then when they go to the east they, they working all the east shit it was just set up so professionally but the good thing was every venue they had was downtown or wherever you went to memphis downtown Memphis. You went to L.A., downtown L.A. Mm -hmm. You know how you know how major you got to be to be able to do that? Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of venues was right next to the NBA stadium, yep. right next to NFL stadiums. Man, it was just, man, it was so much fun. Man, we had so much fun, man. It just, man, just with the juggalos. The craziest popping. thing. What's the craziest thing you man, saw there? Man, I've seen so many crazy. It's so much <laughs> It was so much crazy shit that I've seen, man. It was like, oh, uh, damn, man, what's the craziest shit I've seen? Or what's that? So I'm gonna tell you one thing, like, like it was like this. I, I would say the drug bridge. I would say the drug bridge was the craziest thing because the bridge was the bridge was when whatever you whatever whatever you need or whatever you wanted, all you had to do was then and then just imagine, imagine. You had to just imagine when you 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 also gathering of the juggalo being at the gathering of the juggalo. Imagine just just parties and you on dirt roads, but you on but you on you ain't go kart. Just imagine you riding all down dirt roads. It's all kind of parties and it's lit up like a cavern. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, motherfuckers knocked out. This motherfuckers sleep knocked out so fucked up. They just in, they sleep and they on the dirt road, man. <laughs> And fuck that. My ride pass, motherfucker. Motherfucker just leaning up on the, leaning up on the, man. It, 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 man, it, I seen some crazy, man. I seen some crazy shit. Man, you talking about fun at that motherfucker, man. I seen some, I seen some crazy shit. Like, uh, for instance, like, just say you go in the restaurants, like, like, like they kiss when they sell food, right? You just right in front, right in front of you, you get ready, you, you in line. And right in front of you was a butt naked bitch that just butt naked with her, but her body paint. Yeah. It's like she got clothes. It's like it's like she got clothes on, but it's, it ain't nothing but paint. She she straight butt naked, but it's just like it's really paint. You turn around, you in the back, you just like hell. And is this <laughs> you in the back of you like damn man? Is this motherfucker is this motherfucker naked in front of me? Like this motherfucker, you just had to, you had to be there. You had to be there to see it. You had to really. I'm gonna tell you, somebody telling you about it, it ain't. It, it just you will you never get it. There. You, man, you had to experience. Man. Yeah. You had to experience.